All right, um, in this spreadsheet, now that we've got the formulas for the supply being shipped out and the demand being shipped to each location, uh, we've also got the total cost equation programmed in. Uh, we want to use Excel's solver tool to find the optimal solution to this problem, which means the minimum cost while meeting each of the requirements of demand and not exceeding the supply. So we're going to go to the add-ins area, I mean the data area, the data tab, and we're going to click on Solver. And Solver is a good tool in Excel that allows us to solve linear models. This happens to be what's called a linear model. So the target cell relates to the objective. And like we said, our objective is to minimize the cost. And so we select the total cost as our target cell. In this case, it's cell E2. And because it's a cost, we want to minimize it. And so we set target cell equal to a minimum. So we click min, the radio button right next to minimum. Um, we define a solution by the cells that can change. And uh, our changing cells are the shipment quantities between the different locations. And so I'm going to click inside this area, and I'm going to click and drag the entire array where the shipment quantities will be. And, uh, so that's the next step. And then we also need to define the constraints. So this model is subject to certain constraints. In this case, we have supply constraints from the elevators. And we also have demand constraints at each mill. And so we're going to be entering two sets of constraints. So to add a constraint, I'm going to push Add. And now I get another dialog box that tells that asks for certain references. Now, if I want to, I can add each constraint individually. So if I wanted to add the constraint that the total shipped out of Kansas must be less than 170, I would choose the total out of Kansas. I would make sure that I had the less than or equal to selected in this drop down box. And the constraint would be the total supply I have available. And I would click that cell. But if you notice, I'd have to do that for each of these rows each time. And there's a faster way of doing it. Instead of entering a single cell, I can enter in all of the cells for the supply constraints. So the total supply being shipped is in this column. And the constraint side, I do the same thing, I select all the constraints. And so I've got this entered in correctly. And then I push the add button because I want to add an additional set of constraints. So I push add. And now um, again, I could, uh, um, I could add each demand constraint in individually choosing the equal sign, and then choosing the constraint. Just meeting the demand in Chicago could be its own constraint. But we're going to use the shortcut again. We're going to select all of the sums of demand being met, and we're going to enter in all of the demand constraints at the same time by clicking and dragging. And you do need to make sure that this is an equal sign because in this case, we don't want to ship more or less than the demand required. And then we push OK because this is the last set of constraints that we're in entering. OK. And then the final step is we need to change some options in this dialog box here. So we go to the Options button, click Options. And there's two things that we're going to click here. We're going to assume that this is a linear model, which it is. And we're also going to assume that the 
variables, these shipment quantities, are non-negative shipment quantities. So we click on the checkbox for assume non-negative. Then we're good to go. We push OK. And now we let Excel work its magic. All we have left is to push the solve key. Solve. And now Excel used a process to solve this equation to optimality. In other words, it found the best solution. It even says all constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied and you have the option to keep the solution it found or restore the original values. I recommend you keep the solution if it's correct. If you got some negative numbers in here, that means you forgot to click assume non-negative in the options box, but we're just going to click OK because Excel found the solution. And that's how we use Solver.